subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello and welcome once again to the Joy Learning Channel, the SHSR. My name is Madam Judith and I remain your costing tutor. Today we are going to look at an interesting topic for our section. How many of you just got up and dressed up and you went to school? Hmm. I know a few of you might have just decided to buy a few things on your way before you get to campus. Yes, that means you have made a budget. You have budgeted to buy a few things at a cost. The money your parents are going to give to you for the day, you have also made a budget out of that. Yes, so today on our topic, we are going to look at the budget. Budget, we have budget for the economy, as in our country, Ghana, and we also have budget for organizations. Our focus today is going to be the budget for the various organizations or firms we have in our country or other countries. Each and every organization has its own budget and works with within a particular period. So today, let's focus on how to prepare a budget for an organization. So before we start, let's look at our objectives for the day. So by the end of our lesson today, you are supposed to know and define a budget. You are also supposed to be able to differentiate between a budget and then a forecast. You should also be able to explain budgeting and then budgetary control. Then you should say the advantages and disadvantages of budgetary control. Then you state and explain the types of budget. You should also be able to explain some keywords or terminologies used in the preparation of a budget. And then you should also be able to prepare a functional budget for an organization. If you are ready, I am also ready. Let's get rolling. Now, when we talk about budget, what is a budget? We have budget for an organization and we have the ones for our economy. When we are looking at the government or in parliament or our economy, we can say is an estimate of income and expenditure for a set period of time. Right? Good. So when we look at our economy, they have made an estimate of the national revenue and expenditure. They look at what comes in and then what goes out, as in the payment they are making and the purchases they are making for the country. Now let's bring it down to our household. You hear your parents saying, we don't have to exceed our budget for the month. It means your parents have made a budget for the period. They have budgeted to spend, let's say, 500 Ghana each month. So when you hear your parents say, we have exceeded our budget, it means they have spent beyond the 500 budget they set for the month. Now let's come down to our definition for today. When we talk about budget, according to CIMA, a budget is a plan qu quantified in monetary terms. It's a plan quantified in monetary terms. Prepare and approve prior to a defined period of time, showing the plan income to be generated and or expenditure to be incurred during that period. So when we talk about a budget, it is a plan, but it has been quantified in monetary terms. When you plan and it has not been quantified, that is not a budget. It is just what an estimate. But a budget has been quantified in monetary terms and it is for a specified period. You can make a budget for a day. You can make a budget for a week. You can also make a budget for a month. And it goes on like for a period of time. You can even have a budget for a year, five years down the line. And then it has to show your plan income where you are going to generate your income from. With our government, they generate their income from where? Taxpayers. And some fees, they charge from some firms. 
After knowing your income, you also have to know the expenditure you are going to incur within that period. So, governments release their budget for the period. They made mention of the amount of money they are expected to spend. Let's look at 2021 budget. The government proposed to spend a total of 113.8 billion. That is the budget they have proposed. Now they should be able to tell how much they are going to generate from the taxes and the amount they are going to generate from borrowing from other international firms. So that is our budget. But as I made mention earlier, our focus is going to be the budget being prepared by various organizations or firms, not the one being prepared by the government. But we can always relate with it. Once the organization prepares budget, we also have our economy also preparing a budget for the entire country. So from above definition, we could say that a budget is a plan of action or activities of a business for a future period, which contains quantitative and qualitative information that is to be stated in monetary terms, which will help management in making decision. I hope that is so clear. Now, if you have a budget, it means we also make what? A forecast or a prediction. So let's look at what a forecast is. When we talk about a forecast, we are saying it's an assessment of probable future events. It only predicts what is likely to occur in the future, and such predictions might not be based on scientific knowledge. So as we said, budget is based on monetary terms. Focus is not. It means you have just made prediction into the future, what is expected to occur in the future based on past and present events. So we can take the organization financial statement based on the past or present events, and we can tell the amount they are expected to spend to achieve the organizational goal within a period. So we have just made what a prediction. That is our forecast for the period. That is not a budget. But the budget will be stated according to the amount we are supposed to spend within the period. When our minister stated or proposed the budget, it says transport, we are going to spend this amount. Health sector, we are going to spend this amount. It doesn't just say transport will be doing this kind of jobs. It states the amount they are going to spend with regards to all roads they are going to construct. If you go to the health sector, it will also state the amount of money they are going to spend with regards to the health sector. It wouldn't just say we are going to build a health facility without stating the cost. That is the budget. But the focus may state that the government is going to build health facility without giving a cost. That is something they have predicted to do, which may or may not happen. I hope that is clear. All right, good. So that is a budget and that is a forecast. Now let's look at some differences between the budget and the forecast. So we are saying that the budget is a plan meant to control future events. We can only control future events by looking at our spending, the amount of money we have set with regards to the plan we want to achieve. But the focus is only a prediction event that are likely to occur in the future. As I said, our finance minister may state that they are going to build a health facility. It can happen or it may not happen. That is what a prediction into the future, what they have estimated to achieve. But the budget which have been set with a monetary term or have been quantified in monetary terms, will state that we are supposed to build a health facility which will cost us a hundred billion. That is the budget. So this will control the future event because we know that we are supposed to spend these amounts of money with regards to the health facility. I hope that is clear. Another difference between the two is that the budget is quantitative, as I made mention earlier, but the focus is qualitative because the budget has been quantified in monetary terms, but the prediction for the forecast has just been stated. 
no monetary terms or no quantitative value have been added. Then the budget is possible to have a continuous comparison with actual results, but no continuous comparison with the forecast because there's no results. It either may or may not happen, but for the budget, you stated you are going to build a health facility which will cost you 100 billion. Now, after establishing the health facility, we made comparison. If the actual cost we stated, the 100, is the amount we use in constructing the building, or we spend less, or we spend more, you do all this comparison, whether they are deviations. I hope that is clear. But for the forecast, we cannot make any comparison because it may or may not be done. So there are no comparison with actual results. Now, after knowing what budget is, let's look at what budgeting is. I hope you can try and define budgeting by your own self with the little understanding you have gained with budget. So we say budgeting is a process of preparing a budget. We prepare a budget for a specified period of time. Now, the process of preparing the budget is termed as budgeting. And this deals with a set of control documents and it involves forecasting and then planning. Once we plan, we make a prediction. And once we make a prediction, we attach a monetary term to it. So that is our budgeting. Then we have budgetary control. Once we have made a budget, we need to do what? Set a control mechanism to control our spending. So then what is budgetary control? It has to do with the preparation of budgets and performance in accordance with what is in that budget, comparing such performance with the budget, and finally making corrections if there are any deviations. So as I stated, if you state to construct a road at a cost of 200 billion, and at the end of the day you make your comparison and you realize that you have gone beyond it, there should be a control mechanism to check your spending, whether you've gone beyond or you spend just below what you have stated to spend. And that is what we are terming as a deviation may be detected. And this deviation can either be favorable or unfavorable. If you have budgeted to spend 200 billion for your road construction and you end up spending 180 billion, meaning though there is a difference, but it's what's favoring us. But if you go beyond the 200, that will be a deviation that is what's unfavorable. So budgetary control, it has to do with setting a mechanism to check our budget, the performance, in accordance with what you have stated in that budget. Then you compare the budget with your results. So that is our budgetary control. You should also know that budgets are always reviewed monthly by comparing the budget with actual figures and reports sent to management to identify the difference in their reason. So if there is any deviations, it is the job of management to detect the cause or the reasons for such deviations in our budget. I hope that is clear. Good. Now let's look at the importance of budgeting and budgetary control. Before you step out to school, as I asked, you make the budget. Some of you, before you even get to the entrance of the school, you have bought your food already. And you made the budget. Hey, today when I get to Haji, I'm going to buy Wache, three CD, um, Wele, one CD, Gary. You have made a budget. And then when you make a budget, what benefit do you derive from it? It helps you to plan. You plan way before you left the house. Some of our mothers or our market women before they would leave the house, they have these small sheets of paper that they will put their budget on it. When I get to town, I'll buy rice, where five bags of rice at this. Um, I'm going to buy 10 tomatoes. This, I'm going to buy, oh, I need to buy this shoe for my daughter. They have made the budget. It has made them to plan ahead before getting to town. So budgets help with planning. One importance of planning, sorry, of budgeting and budgetary control is planning. 
So the budgetary system, it forces management to plan their activities ahead of time. And this will serve as a guidelines for the achievement of the organizational goals. If you don't plan, you cannot achieve your set goals or aims. So by making a budget, it helps the organization to plan ahead of time. Within the period from January to December, they have already planned. They know their spending, they know their costs, and they know where to derive their income from. And this will help them to achieve their organizational goals. Budgeting also defined responsibilities. We have different functional leaders in an organization. So when you enter some organization, we have the production department, we have the account department, we have the marketing department, we have the procurement department. All these leaders or heads or managers of the various functional departments have their work schedule and they will have to plan and submit their budget to coordinate all these budgets into the master budget. So one importance of the budget is to define the various responsibilities of the managers in the organization. Every um, manager have their work clearly spelled out by the budget because they are all supposed to even prepare their budget and give it to the budget officer. So it helps the organization to define the responsibilities of each manager or head in an organization. We can also say that the budget helps in coordination. All the activities in the various departments in an organization could be coordinated in such that it helps them to achieve the organizational goals together. As we are bringing our budget together, accounts will bring their budget. Marketing will also submit their budget. Procurement will submit their budget. Then we coordinate everything. Once we are coordinating our budget, it means we are all going to work as a team. There's coordination among the various departmental heads. The budget preparation also helps with control. It enables management to control all the departments in an organization in order to attain the best possible results by each department. This is done by comparing actual results with the budget attained with the set target. So it helps organizations to control their spending by bringing together all the departmental budget. We can also say that the budget also helps with communication and motivation. The budget to control it enhances effective communication among all the various levels of management. As I made mention earlier, they all have to prepare their budget and then bring it together for it to be coordinated into the master budget. And in doing this, there's communication among all the departmental heads. And we also have our staffs being motivated as they are being involved in the budget preparation. They are motivated to work hard, to help in the achievement of the organization set goals. So we can also say the budget also help in the measurement of performance. So as each departmental heads of management are submitting their budget, it means they have stated the work they are supposed to do within a specified period. And this will help to monitor and assess their performance within that specified period. So these are some of the importance of budgeting and then budgetary control. We look at some disadvantages. We can always have a positive side and a negative side. As we look at the importance of preparing a budget, let's also look at the disadvantages of the budget. We have excessive spending. Excessive spending. Let's look at our economy as an example. We have the various ministry and they will all have to present their budget to the finance minister to coordinate everything together to bring the budget for the whole Ghana. Now, some of these ministers will add some things to the budget which are not supposed to be there. And 
when the money uh, issues to them, they end up spending such money on themselves. And the work that they have stated to do will just not be accomplished. So we have in an organization, some managers may also hide behind the budget and overspend without being held accountable because they've stated in the budget and the person in charge may not go ahead to monitor and then they will end up spending the money especially where excess expenditure have been built into the budget. You get it? They want to construct road. Even the contractor that was employed to construct the road has overcharged. So there is always excessive spending because people are hiding behind the budget that has been prepared for the economy or for the organization. Another disadvantage is inflexibility. The existence of the budget and budgetary control may not bring about lack of flexibility in adapting to changes. So look at our economy now. An organization may say we are already done preparing our budget. And with our system where the dollar is rising, it may not be so flexible to change the budget once it has been prepared within a specified period. So that is another disadvantage of the budgeting and budgetary control. We have variances. As I just mentioned, we have some circumstances that may cause a deviation in the budget that have been prepared, like machine breakdown. You came to work, you couldn't work to achieve the set goal for the day. There is undue pressure. It will make it difficult to establish clear and realistic objectives of the desired performance for an organization. We can also have delays and lacks in the budget because it may take time in obtaining actual results and comparing such results with the budgeted figures, which may also be a disadvantage to the budget that has been prepared. We also have low morale. While some managers do not cooperate and coordinate with other budget holders, the budget can lower the working spirit of workers and consequently affect the output of the staff of such organization. Now let's look at some key terms relating to the budget. When we talk about key terms, we're looking at some terminologies we use when we are preparing the budget. We have the budget center. What is a budget center or where is a budget center? Every organization or our economy have a budget center. It's a section of a business where planning and control of budget is exercised. That's the place where coordination of budget preparation is done. So in an organization, they may set a specified office where budget is being prepared. And that is what we are terming as a budget center. Then we can also look at the budget administration. They oversee the, over the formation of a budget committee and the preparation of a budget manual to guide the preparation of the budget. They oversee the formation of the budget committee. So the administration, they make sure there is a committee who prepare the budget. And then they would see to the budget manual, which serve as a guide for the preparation of a budget in an organization. And this will ensure that the budget process works effectively within the organization. We also have the budget manual. And the budget manual is a document that contains the procedures of preparing budgets and the composition of the budget committee and its role. So we have a manual. And this manual will guide or it has stated the steps or procedures in preparing a budget for the economy or an organization. And then what goes on in the budget committee. It also states the role of the budget committee, what is expected of them. So that is the budget manual. Then we also have the budget period. When you talk about period, we are looking at from this time to this time, the budget that has been prepared. So it is this time frame within which the budget must be used. Some organization may decide to prepare a budget for the first quarter of the year. Some may go ahead to do the first two quarters. Some may do just the first half 
of the year. And others may prepare their budget for the whole year. So we have the budget period. When it has been prepared, the budget must be used within that time frame. So we say the budget period is the time frame within which the budget must be used. That is the accounting year which the budget relates. So if this budget relates from January to December, it means the budget have to be used within that time frame. Good. We also have the budget committee. And with the budget committee, they ensure that the budgets are realistically established and satisfactorily coordinated. All functional budgets are presented to this committee for approval. So as a head of department, when you are done with your department budget, you need to submit the budget to the budget committee for approval before they can coordinate or to have the master budget for the organization. So the sales manager will prepare his budget, the production manager will prepare his budget, the procurement will prepare his budget, the labor unit will also prepare their budget, and the committee are supposed to receive all these budgets, coordinate everything together for approval, and this will give the master budget for the organization for the time frame stated. Then let's look at the budget officer. Who is a budget officer? All right, we have the police officer, we have the military, we also have officers for budgets. So then who is a budget officer? Here's the head of the budgetary control. As we said, we have committee that prepares the budget and this committee has the head and the head is the budget officer. He is the head of the budgetary control in an organization. And his main duty is to ensure that the various departmental heads come together to prepare the budget for the organization. As I made mention, we have different functional heads in an organization. So when I talk about functional, look at the subsidiaries in the firm. And that can be the marketing, the procurement, the stores, the account. All these managers have to come together to prepare the budget for the organization. So the budget officer acts as the head of this budgetary control and then prepares the budget for the organization for a specified period of time. We look at the duties of this budget officer. He is in charge of the budget program and he prepares a timetable for budget preparation. He draws budget program and then a timetable for a budget preparation. The budget officer also gives instruction to all functional managers for proper execution of the budget. So all functional heads, as I made mention, are supposed to take instruction for these, from these um, budget officer for proper execution of the budget for the organization. He also provides information and guidelines relating to the preparation of the budget. So for any budget to be prepared, it is a duty of the budget officer to prepare or provide information and guidelines relating to the preparation of the budget for the organization. The budget officer also acts as the secretary of the budget committee. Whenever the budget committee meets to deliberate or prepare a budget, he is in the position to act as the secretary to the budget committee. He also advises the budget committee on matters relating to the budget. If there is any issue relating to the budget, it is the duty of the budget officer to advise the budget committee. The budget officer also makes follow-ups to ensure that managers prepare their budget on time. In every organization, there is a deadline to meet a target or to meet the specified objectives of the organization. And in doing that, to achieve or attain that, the managers have to prepare their budget and submit to the committee. So it is the duty of our budget officer to do follow-ups to ensure that the managers have prepared their budget on time. So these are 
few duties of he has a lot of duties to perform but these are just a little few of the functions of the budget officer i hope you are following good now let's look at a principal budget factor when we look at principal budget factor in every preparation of a budget there is something that will hinder us from achieving our goal you got up you said today i'm going to accra i need some new sneakers and some dresses but something is hindering you from achieving that budget it can be economical changes in the market you budgeted for 50 but when you got to market it's 100 it's a factor that will hinder you from achieving your budget so let's come to our lesson for today and look at what budget factor is our principal budget factor is a limiting factor that may render the achievement of a budget difficult it will render the achievement of a budget difficult and therefore it is essential to consider it very well when a budget is being prepared so before you prepare your budget you need to consider all these principal budget factors you have to consider them before you make your budget ready because it can hinder the achievement of your budget and this can include we have materials. Assuming you need to produce um, a product, the materials you need in production, there may be shortages, and this will hinder or prevent you from achieving that target. So when there are shortages of material, it will prevent us from achieving the aim of the organization with regards to production. We also have finance. You are into production, you need to produce 50 bottles of pineapple juice, but you do not have the finance to help you achieve that target. And that may be a limiting factor to achieve your budget. Then we also have shortage of labor. Before I can produce these 50 bottles of pineapple juice, I need someone to cut the pineapples into pieces, blend them, add ginger. That is the labor. The person working is a labor. But if I do not get the labor to work for me, this will also prevent us from achieving our target. Then we also have production capacity. Can we produce the 50 as we have stated? Are all our machines in good shape? You need to consider all this because it will prevent you from achieving your target. Let's look at some types of budgets. As we are into budget preparation, we have various types of budgets being prepared by various organizations in the country. The first one is a fixed budget. When we talk about fixed, we have heard about fixed costs, fixed, fixed, fixed. When we say something is fixed, it means it does not change as our output changes from our Definition from fixed cost. We know this. We have learned about this. So we have an idea what fixed means when we say something is fixed. Now let's relate this to our budget. When we say fixed budget, what is a fixed budget? It's a budget on the basis of an estimated output and sales without considering the fact that volumes of production and sales may be different from the budgeted figures. So it means with this budget, it doesn't make consideration into the volume of production or sales. It is what fixed, it does not change as output may change. Then we also have a flexible budget. This budget considers the fact that the expected volume of production and sales may change. So the first one is fixed. This one, we can also relate it to the variable cost. So like a flexible budget, it changes. It pay attention to the expected volume of production and then the sales. It also recognizes the different cost behavior patterns. It's designed to change as the volume of output changes. So this one, as the economy is changing now with our dollar rate high, it means this budget is subject to change because the prices and output levels may also change. We have another type as the basic budget. And this budget is based on a long-term plan. 
and it is used as a basis for developing our current budget. So we have budget for a long term, like five years, and we can develop our short term budget or plan from this type of budget. So basic budget is for a long term. And then we have the current budget, which is being derived from our basic budget. So if we set a budget for five years, now we know this budget will take five years for us to you know, compare our results with the actuals. Now from this long term plan, we have developed a short term plan. So if you have a budget for five years, now you can develop a budget for a year. So the yearly budget have been developed from where? The five years plan, which is the basic budget. We can also even have a three month budget, which has been developed from that five years budget. And that is our current budget. It has been developed for use over a short period of time. Usually we can say a year, but sometimes less. And it is related to the current conditions likely to prevail during the budget period. So if an organization have already prepared their budget, even before the dollar um, rates went up, it means it is subject to change. It can change because it has considered the, what, the current condition of the economy within the budget period. We can also have the rolling budget. When we talk about rolling budget, it's prepared within 12 months. And then it is like for a year, that is 12 month budget prepared for the whole year. And then we can break it down into quarters. That is the four quarters of um, within the period, that is three months each in a quarter. So that is the rolling. Once we are ending the first three months, the next one is being prepared. So the process of having in advance the next monthly quarter budget and dropping the old quarter budget is known as what? Rolling or continuous budget. As the first quarter is ending, the next quarter is ready. So we throw away the first quarter budget and then we start using the next quarter budget. So that's the rule. Once one budget is ending, we begin to use the next quarter budget. And that is a rolling budget. These are some types of budgets. We can also have a few like the zero base budget. Now let's look at the master budget. What is a master budget? We've already talked about the functional. I, I just made mention that in every organization, we have the various functional heads. And they will prepare this budget, coordinate it together, and that will give us the master budget. So what then is the master budget? It is a summary budget incorporating its component functional budget. So which is finally approved, adopted, and employed. So once the budget head or the budget officer approve all the functional heads budget, it is coordinated together, approved, and then employed for use in an organization. That is, it is the summation of all the functional budget of an organization. So once we put all the functional budgets from the various functional heads together, it becomes the master budget for use by the organization of firm. Let's look at the functional budget in detail. So when we talk about the functional budget, as I said, it is a subsidiary budget because each department in an organization will have to submit their budget. Therefore, a functional budget is a subsidiary budget prepared by the various functional managers for the department they represent. The preparation is assisted always by an accounting staff. So marketing may get an accounting staff assisting them to aid in the preparation of their departmental budget, which is one part of the subsidiary budget. Then um, procurement will also prepare their budget. Oh, within this year, I think the organization needs to change their machines, as in their desktop. So the procurement officer will also have to prepare a budget for the period. And that will also go through the budget officers for approval. And in all these, all these functional heads will submit their budget for each department they represent. And this will be coordinated together to give us 
the master budget. But for now, we are going to look at the functional budget in details. Let's look at some of the functional budgets prepared by an organization. We have the sales budget. As I said, the sales manager will also have to prepare a budget to indicate the amount of quantity of a product he or she will want to sell at the end of the period. Then the production manager will also have to prepare a production budget to tell us the number of units they are supposed to produce to achieve the sales budget. Right. Then we have the material usage and purchase budget. If we need to produce a product, then it means we need materials to produce. So we need a material usage and purchase budget to tell us how many of materials we will need in production. I hope that is clear. We also have the labor budget. All right. How many hours are we going to use in production? A budget needs to be prepared with regards to that. Then we have our cash budget. Okay, an organization needs to spend, yeah. What is their income, their receipt, what is coming into the business, and what is going out? A cash budget is being prepared to know our inflows and then our outflows. Then we also have the capital budget. These are just a few of the functional budget. Now let's look at them one after the other in detail. So what is the sales budget? The sales budget, is a budget prepared to show the quantities of a product a firm plans to sell multiplied by its intended selling price. The quantity to sell shows the quantity to produce after considering opening and closing stock. So in general, the sales budget helps the organization to know the quantities they are supposed to produce. Once the sales manager has focused or stated the quantity it wants to sell to achieve its aim within the specified period, then we can go on to prepare the production budget, which will aid in achieving the sales target. Okay, so let's look at an example. If you want to produce or you have stated, by the end of November, I want to sell 500 bags of um, such as water. That is the target for the month. And for each bag, I want to sell it as seven CD per bag. So for us to know the total sales at the end of the period, we need to multiply the quantity the organization may want to sell by the rate per bag, right? And that will give us our total amount we are going to um, realize at the end of the month. After knowing our sales, this will aid us in preparing the production budget after considering the quantity we want to keep in our stores at the end of the period, considering what we already have in our stores. So let's look at our first illustration to help us in the sales budget preparation. So we have our sales budget. Chicks Limited produces two different products naming Leah and Sia. The sales forecast for the next period are 6,000 and 4,400 units respectively. The firm expects to sell the product at 15 cities and 18 Ghana cities respectively. So you take note of the main points. We have Leah selling 6,000 at the end of the period and Sia also selling 4,500 at the end of the period. You can put it down somewhere. Then for each of the units they are producing, they are expecting to sell Lia at 15 Ghana cities and then 18 Ghana cities for Syria respectively. Now, what is our requirement? We are required to prepare a sales budget for the period. Great. So we want to know the budget for with regards to sales. Let's look at how we can do this simple one for Chicks Limited. So our suggested solution, make sure you state the company's name and then the type of budget you are preparing for the organization. So we have Chicks Limited and we are preparing what the sales budget. We show our um, products we are to produce that is Li and SI, that's Lia and Sia. Then the quantity under Lia, we want to sell at the end of the period 6,000 units, right? 
I hope you 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 had that down so it will be easy for you to follow. So we are supposed to sell six thousand units at the end of the period. Then for SIA, we have estimated to sell four thousand five hundred units at the end of the period. Now this is our sales budget. At what rate do we expect to sell this unit? So for Leah, we are expecting to sell the 6,000 units per each is what? 15 cedars. So for each of the products, we are selling it 15 cedars. And for Sia, we are selling it at 18. So to know the, the total revenue that we are expected to make at the end of the period, we multiply the 6,000 by the 15 cities and then the 4,500 by the 18 cities, giving us a total of 90,000 that will be realized at the end of the period for Leah. And then for Sia, we are going to realize 81,000 cities. So to know the total revenue we are expecting to make at the end of the period, we add the 90,000 and then the 81,000, giving us a total of 171,000 cities. So this is very simple, right? I hope you can prepare a sales budget for an organization. Looking at it, you just need to know the quantity the organization is expecting to sell at the end of the period, at which rates we are supposed to issue that. And then we add, if it's just one product, then it means at the end of the period, we are going to earn what's 90,000. But because we have two different products being produced, or being on sale by the organization, we add the two to give us a total of 171,000. I hope that is clear. Good. Now, once we know our sales budget for the period, this will aid us in preparing our production budget. Now, let's look at our production budget. What is a production budget? A production budget is an estimate of the quantity of goods to be produced. It is prepared to ensure that production is sufficient to meet sales demand while keeping economic stock levels. You know, we need to have our stock levels being maintained. Now, we want to sell 6,000 of Lira and 4,500 of Sia. The question is, how many units do we need to produce to achieve that sales target? If the sales manager says, I want to sell 6,000, okay, then production manager, how many units should I produce to meet that target? Now, some organizations already have some products in their stores before production. So you need to consider what we call your opening balance and then your closing balance. Though you already have some materials from the previous month already sitting in your stalls, you may also want to have some product at the end of the month which you are going to carry forward. So you need to consider your opening balance and then your closing balance to know the actual quantity you may have to produce to meet your sales target. Right, good. So let's look at an illustration in detail to the preparation of a production budget. So with reference to illustration one, that is our sales budget, we noted that the sales manager sales says, I want to sell 6,000 units at the end of the period. Right, good. For Leah, and then 4,500 for Sia. Now let's look at the additional information added. So the sales target we have Li as 6,000 units, and then Si as 4,500 units, right? So this has been transferred from our first illustration. Now let's look at the additional information added. So from Chiefs Limited in illustration one, you can put the main point down as in the figures, which will aid in our calculation. Assuming stock levels at the beginning of the period are given as follows. We have the opening stock for LI as 1,000 units, and then for SI as 800 units. Then we have the budgeted closing stock for LI as 2,000 units, and then for SI as 1,500 units. Make sure you take note of that. So our opening stock is 1,000 for Lira, and then 800 for Sia. 
Then the budgeted closing stock for LIA is 2,000, and then the closing stock for CIA is 1,500 units. Don't forget our sales for LIA is 6,000 and 4,500 for CIA, respectively. You are expected to prepare the production budget for Chicks Limited. So let's look at how we can do that for Chicks Limited. Now, we said the production budget is prepared to aid us achieve the targets set by the sales manager, right? So we know our sales budget are 6,000 and then 4,500 respectively. Now, we have our sales quantity for Leah at 6,000 and that for CR is 4,500. Now, you need to consider your opening stock, which is already existing. So from this 6,000, we already have some materials or products already in our stores. That is our opening balance. So let's say this budget is being prepared for January. Or let me use November because we are in November. So November, from October, we had a balance from October, which is already in our stores or warehouse, which has become our opening balance. We will have to subtract that opening balance because from this 6,000 that we want to sell, we already have a balance in our store. We need to subtract that. Then consider the quantity we want to leave at the, in the stores at the end or we have to maintain in our stores at the end of November, right? And this will help us know, though we need to sell 6,000, but we may not have to produce all this system because we already have some balance from the previous month. And the balance we want to maintain combined. Either we are going to produce below this 6,000 or beyond the 6,000 per the quantity we want to maintain in our stores at the end of the period. Good, right? Okay. So we list our opening stock. And we said Leah has an opening stock of 1,000 and Sia has an opening stock of 800. So we list our opening stock. Under Leah, we have 1,000. And then under Sia, we have 800 units with less, and that will give us 5,000 for Leah, and then 3,700 for Sia. So if the organization intend not to leave any um, product in the stores or warehouse at the end of the period, that means the uh, production manager may have to produce 5,000 units of Leah, and then 3,700 units of Sia. I hope that is clear. That is if the organization intend not to maintain any quantity of the product in the stores. But once they want to maintain something, that's the closing stock at the end of the period, it means we have to add that closing stock they are expecting to maintain back to this quantity to know the actual quantity we are supposed to produce to meet our sales targets. I hope this is very simple. So we add our closing stock for Leah, we have a closing stock of 2,000. And then for Sia, we have a closing stock of 1,500 units. So we add it up, giving us a total of 7,000 for Leah and then 5,200 for Sia. So for the production manager, Joe, the sales quantity, the sales manager wants to sell is 6,000 for Leah and then 4,500 for Sia. The production manager, after considering the opening balance and the closing, will have to produce 7,000 units of LIA and then 5,000 units of CIA to meet the sales target for the specified period. I hope that is clear. Good. Now let's look at the material budget. This material budget is in two stages. We have the material usage budget and then the material purchase budget. So we will take a look at the usage budget and when we meet in our next session, we will look at the purchase budget. So when we talk about the material usage budget, what is the material usage? Now we want to produce a product. How many materials or quantity of materials are we going to use in production? That should be the first question, right? So the production manager has estimated or prepare the budget that I'm going to produce this quantity of products. Now, we also need to prepare a budget to tell the quantity we will need in production, right? Good. So let's look at the material you say budget. It is a budget which is prepared to show all 
all materials, whether direct or indirect, that will be needed to meet the production requirements. It is stated in quantities, and this will help in the material purchase budget preparation. Once we know our quantity to produce, we also need to know the quantity of materials we will need to meet our production requirement. Right, good. Let's build on, on our, let's build up on our illustration. So from the first illustration, we can say we um, give an additional information to support us in preparing our material usage budget. So let's look at product layer and SI using the same material component but in different proportion as shown below. When we are producing products LI and SI, we are going to use this kind of material AB and SY, right? So it means these two products, we will need two different materials in production, right? Now, when we are producing LI, we are going to need 3 kg of AB and then 2 kg of SY. And then when we are producing SI, we will need 2 kg of AB and then 1 kg of SY. And this will cost per unit of 10 for LI and then 12 for SI. I hope that is clear. So don't forget that we had our sales where LI budget is 6,000 to be sold and SI budget is 4,500 to be sold. Now, after our production, we know that we are supposed to produce SI 5,200 and then LI 7,000. So for this quantity we want to produce, let's quickly look at the quantity of materials we will need in production. Now, so material usage budget, we have our product, that is, and then our component part. Our product component part, we have component A, B, that is the material we will need in production, A, B, and then S, Y. And then for our product, we have product L, I, which is LIA, and then product S, I. So when we are producing product L, I, as I made mention, we, the total quantity we need to produce is 7,000. And for each of the 7,000, we will need material A, B, 3 kg of this material. So we want to know the total quantity of this material A, B, we will need in producing product L, I. So we have a total product of 7,000. And the quantity of A, B, we will need is 3 kg. We multiply and that will give us a total of 21,000 of A, B. So to produce mat uh, product L, I, we will need 21,000 quantity of material AB. And when we are producing material uh, um, LIA, we are going to need 2 kg of SY, right? So if the total unit to produce is 7,000, for each of these 7,000, per, per each unit produced, we will use 2 kg of material SY. So we multiply the 7,000, by the two to give us a total of 14,000 kg of SY. Now let's look at SI. The total quantity of SI to produce is 5,200. And for each unit of SI we will produce, we will need two kg of material AB. So we multiply the 5,200 by the two kg, giving us a total of 10,400. And for each um, SI we will produce, we will need one kg of the material SY to produce the total of 5,200. When we multiply, that will give us 5,200. So to know the total quantity of material AB and SY we will need in producing this product, we add this 21,000, which we will need for AB, uh, LI, when we are producing, when we are producing, um, both LI and SI, and that will give us a total of 31,400 for material AB, and then 19,200 for material um, SY. All right, so um, 
Um, so far, we have looked at what a budget is. And then for a budget to be prepared, we say it helps as a plan for the organization. So for us to end our lesson today, you will have to go home with a few assignments, like something you can practice on your own whilst you have your free time. After knowing what a budget is, I know from today when you are going out to town, you definitely make a budget or you focus on your future plans, what you are expecting to do in some um, future or um, 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 sorry, you have plans of what you have to do in the near future. And then when you quantify it in monetary terms, that becomes your budget. So as you go home, let's look at these few questions for trial. You state two purpose of a budget. What are the objectives of a budget? You should also explain the following as used in budget. We have the cash budget, the sales budget, and also the production budget, which are all part of the functional budget. You should also look at this question too. You should explain what a functional budget is, the master budget, and then the budget manual. You should also be able to list for examples of the functional budget. So this is where we end or draw the curtains to our lesson today. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and you have a great deal. When you're home, you should be able to tell your parents whether they are going beyond their budget or they are spending below their budget. Until we meet again in our next lesson, enjoy your day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.